oh my god your hair is everything thank you <laughs> thank you Genevia how are you I'm great. I have to tell you, when I first started watching the show and you first appeared in season one, I thought, why do I recognize her? And then it me- immediately it hit me, the iconic quote from Living Single about men being like wine, they start as <laughs> grapes and you stomp on them and then you keep them in the dark until they mature into something we wouldn't mind having dinner with. Wow. <laughs> Are you aware of how viral that quote is on the internet, even outside of the ecosystem of the hardcore fans of the show? No, Lady Darcy, I am not. But you know what? I'm glad that that stands the test of time. (laughs) Absolutely. For the two of you, a lot of times your characters only appear when it's relevant to the stories of the members of the Wu-Tang Clan. So how much do you two as actors imagine uh what these characters are thinking and feeling and doing outside of what you actually get to see in the episodes i would say at times especially you guys will get to see it the second season at times resentment because you know it's like you come home to me and and you vet to me and we work out these problems but then when you go back into the world with the boys you know it's like this was my idea like no it wasn't you know uh the women are kind of the backbone and and we help the guys more than than they i guess sometimes appreciate or talk about so i think sometimes there can be resentment but also a wonder of like maybe I should do my own thing or, or how do I uh, kind of separate myself from my relationship? Because that's not all of who I am. Anything you want to add? Sure. This story is not told from the point of view of the female. It's a very male skewed show to be, to be clear. And so you're right. It was actually an excellent question. Um, what are these people doing when they're not on stage <laughs> thinking about these young men? And I think that that's um, a question that we need to ask ourselves about a lot of black and brown people, especially women, and how they are held into a traditional space of being the pillar of strength, but not having the full sort of dynamic and conversation inside of the complexity of what it is to be a woman, especially during that time. Definitely, they were there to hold it down. There was a lot of mass incarceration around young black men and, um, and poor people of all colors. And yet these women found a way to thrive, but they, they, they did in a very, uh, like almost in the dark ages. And so I, I love your question and it's a wonderful question, but I do think that um, part of the reason why um, Rizzo wanted to represent her, his mother was in tribute to her to also say that he would be not, they would not be there without her. And I think if you look at even the Goody Mob and people like that, they all say their mothers made all the difference and not only just surviving, but thriving, but also living and dying. Another thing that we frequently see on the show is that since it's about the Wu-Tang Clan, we get to see more of these musical numbers and the actors who play those guys, they get to do the songs. And unfortunately, you two don't get to join in on this, but if you could, which Wu-Tang Clan songs would you most want to join in for uh, your own musical number? Uh, I would want to be on Method Man for Me sure, too, even that. though it's just him. Yeah, I love Method Man. A Better Tomorrow, I like the words, I like the idea of A Better Tomorrow. I love the fact that there's a movie called A Better Tomorrow in a, a whole other space. I like the idea of it. I would have liked to have been any of that. And in fact, you know, I was a rap artist back in the day. It never came out. I'm not even kidding you because we were all trying to do those types of things. But, um, um, that was also a very male space. And the people that broke through, like people like my friends, like Queen Latif and MC Light, they were often in a solo space because they weren't invited into those types of groups. You know, so that's a, another great question. Really quick, do you have any other projects that you would like to plug while you're here that you're working on or any uh, other career aspirations that you want to manifest, maybe even outside of acting. I know you do some writing and not sure about you uh, since you're uh, newer and younger. So uh, anything you want to plug right now? Go ahead, Zoli. Uh, I just finished filming a movie called The Enforcer. It'll be out next summer, hopefully. Um, and yeah, I want everybody to, to tune in. It'll be a very interesting uh, thriller. 
and I'm in Run the World, as uh, which was created by Yvette Lee Bowser and um, a, a new uh, comedy. I'm also an American Refugee, a film coming out, um, and also a new series from, from Apple um, with um, Elizabeth Moss called Ripple Effect. But I'm also a producer, and I produced the John Lewis documentary. We just got three Emmy nominations. We're really excited about that. And thank you. And also, I um, created a line of NFTs, NFTs for my a graphic novel, Concrete Park, the first collection sold out. So we're gonna do a whole uh, um, generative project like um, people who know this, the crypto space understand the, um, the board apes or the, um, that type of things, Crypt crypto kitties and all that. That's what I'm into. Well, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on season two. I binged it last night, have not gotten a single wink of sleep, but it was totally worth it. It was so much fun to watch. Uh, hopefully we get more seasons and more of you in more episodes because you two are fantastic as well. Thank, thank you. you. Keep holding it down in the space for females and for females and uh, you ask the best questions. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye.